Hey everybody, Dave from Bricks of the Dead here, and today we're going to take a look at a new game called Darkest Dungeon. i um, going to do my review a little bit differently than I normally do. Usually when I do video reviews of games, I script the whole thing, I get a bunch of footage from the game, and then I kind of edit them together. And what I thought I'd do this time is kind of make it more of a Let's Play commentary style review. So it's not going to be, you know, half hour long like my Let's Play videos tend to be, um, but hopefully it'll be a little bit longer than you know my video reviews that are you know three to five minutes long so yeah there we go we're gonna try something a little bit different so this is darkest dungeon and it's sort of a dark fantasy role-playing game which is you know a little different than what we would normally do at bricks of the dead it's not really you know straight up horror although there are certainly horror elements um there's not really zombies although there's plenty of undead in here um but it's got a lot of really cool design features that i thought you know kind of fit into our horror and you know survival milieu if you will so so there you go. So this is this is Darkest Dungeons. And this is one of the games that I've played. So I've spent, I don't know, like 10 days or something in the game. So I've opened up a few of the things. I've found quite a few different characters. So I figured rather than start right from the beginning, I can start a game that's, you know, not super far along, but far enough along where you can kind of get a little bit better sense of things than just showing you the game right from the beginning. So this is 10 days in. So um, just kind of a real quick tour. Uh, this is kind of your estate town. So as you can see, this is this is an area that has seen better days. Um, you are the inheritor of this estate, but uh, not really a whole lot to inherit. It's been overrun by evil or by, you know, whatever you want to call it. And you kind of want to come here and restate this place to its former glory, um, which is easier said than done. I, I mostly just die. Um, but here we go, and we can kind of mouse over, you know, the town a little bit and kind of see, you know, some of the different elements. So over here we have this survivalist, and this, you know, if we click on this, this is going to be an area that we can upgrade our camping skills. Um, so we don't see much here, but we can expand this, and um, this is the bonfire, and this is where we can invest some of the different things that we find when we do quests to, you know, upgrade this guy and, you know, get more and better stuff. So we see here we can upgrade it the first time, and it'll reduce training skills um, by 10%. And then all these other upgrades down the road that there are prerequisites to see. Um, and then if we want, we can drag one of our guys over here, and this will show us the different things that, that we can unlock for him. Uh, so right now he has this abandoned hope skill, uh, but for 1750 gold, we can unlock dark ritual or we can unlock unspeakable commune. And all of these characters are going to have different things that we can unlock. So this guy whose name I'm not even going to pronounce or attempt to pronounce, excuse me, is an occultist. Uh, this woman is uh, more of your general cleric. So she has things like bless, chant, wound care so she's got more typical cleric skills that you might be used to we can unlock prey we can unlock sanctuary we can unlock encourage and so on and so forth so each different character class here that we move in we'll see different things and there are i think i want to say eight or nine different character classes available you get kind of your rogue your cultist your cleric the plague doctor uh i don't remember what all of them they're called uh, but but there's there's enough variety there where it, it keeps it fun it keeps it interesting so that's really cool so this is this is kind of our campground uh down here is the stagecoach and this is where new heroes come in um so we'll see this is Stagecoach driver, he brings stuff in. Uh, just like with the campsite, we can upgrade the stagecoach through different ways. So we can bring more people in every time, or we can upgrade our bar barracks so that we can hold more heroes over here in reserve. And trust me, you're going to want as many people as you can get because you're going to be burning through these heroes like crazy. So we see this is you know the four heroes that were brought in most recently. So we have an occultist, a bounty hunter, a jester, and then another bounty hunter. Um, if you right click on any of them, we can get a bunch of their different information. We'll look at this with the heroes that we already have. But this is the this is the stagecoach. This is what brings new people in. 
Here's our tavern, and this is one of a couple of different buildings in your town that basically exist to help de-stress your heroes. And this is kind of the big thing that I think sets Darkest Dungeon aside from your more typical role-playing games, because in addition to have to worry about being attacked and cursed and all these other things, all of your characters accumulate stress the longer they're in dungeons and exploring and fighting these hideous monstrosities. So that stress kind of slowly starts building up and then it can reach a point at which the hero is tested. And most of the time they're tested and these awful character traits come out. But once in a while they're tested and you know they come out as, as a better hero. But that's that doesn't happen as often. So if we look over to the side here, we see this Bavent, this our cleric. Um, so she has the affliction of abusive. So what happens is her stress level you see is at 100% so she was tested, she failed the test, and she became abusive. And what this does is while you're you know, exploring the dungeon or what have you, she makes all these snide little comments and is abusive to the rest of the party, which makes them stress more. Um, and there's all these different things that can unlock. You know, Some people are, um, they, they want to experience pain. So when you try to heal everybody else, they'll pass they won't get healed and then that makes your gameplay harder uh, you have some people that are cowardly so they'll run to the back of the group and they'll refuse to fight and all these different things that you have to manage and try to get around um, you can't really do much about it while you're in the dungeon but when you get back into town you can utilize some of these different areas like this tavern uh, we can drag this lady into the bar and for a thousand gold we can let her sit out for a turn and she can drink her her you know troubles away uh, there's a gambling hall and we set this guy to our gambling hall last time around uh, and it turns out we found out a trade about him where he's not so great to leave at gambling halls because he ended up disappearing afterwards that's why he's got a question mark next to his his name um, he went gambling and nobody knows where he went um, we also have a brothel uh, so people can go, you know, visit the prostitutes and de-stress that way. You know, we're, we're not here to judge. They'll do what they want. Whatever it takes to get them feeling better. So we have the tavern, we've got the sanitarium, and we've got the abbey. So all three of these can help relieve stress and, you know, get rid of these weird quirks and things that, that pop up. And then we have our guild. So this is where we can upgrade the different combat skills that people have. So if we, again, drag a person in here, you can see all the different things that they can unlock. And then we have our blacksmith. And this is where we can unlock the different equipment that they can, they can get. Uh, then we have the nomad wagon where we can try to buy rare items. And this tree thing, I, I have not unlocked yet, so I, I don't know what that is. I, I, I've unlocked it in another game, but for whatever reason, I can't figure it out. So this is sort of one half of the game, is coming into your estate and kind of managing all your characters and you know trying to reduce their overall stress level and keep them healthy and as happy as possible. And it's it's really an uphill battle. It's, it's not easy to do. That's one of the big challenge levels of the game. Uh, the other half of the game is going on quests, going into dungeons, exploring, and doing all this stuff. And you do that by clicking Embark. And when you embark, you've got a few different areas that you can choose from. Uh, you start off with just the ruins. You can explore the ruins. And you'll see we've got these four different circle icons. These are the different quests that you can go on. So this one is Reclaim the Relics of the Light. So here you have to gather three holy relics. This one is purify the altar. You have to activate three corrupted altars and purify them. We have scout. We have to explore 90% of the rooms. And then we have kill the necromancer apprentice. And we have to kill one necromancer apprentice. So when you first start off, I think the only quest you have here is scout. So that's all you can do. But the more that you do, you unlock more things. You start unlocking different areas. You can explore the warrens and the well, the cove, and eventually darkest dungeon. Um... So the Darkest Dungeon and the Cove aren't are unlocked yet. And I don't even know if these are available yet. This game is still in early access. But um, this is what I've got so far. So we're just going to do a really basic one. We'll probably die. Um, we'll do this... Uh, 
complete 100 percent of room battle so every time there are enemies in a room we have to fight them we have to go through as many of the rooms that have enemies in it and once we do that we win um now one thing that's really unusual about this game is Generally, when you play a role-playing game, you kind of go in expecting to win 99% of the time. Sometimes you might have to you know, retreat temporarily, you heal up, and you go right back in there and you take out the bad guy. This game is, is very, very different. It's a, it's a battle of attrition the whole way through. You, you creep your way through the dungeon, and the whole time, you guys' stress is just accumulating and accumulating. Um, and that makes them less effective. They get wounded. You really don't have a whole lot of opportunity or means to heal them. And, you know, by the time you get about halfway through the dungeon, everybody's pretty ragged. Um, so completing a quest is is difficult here. Um, but it, it's interesting. So we're going to do this weld or wield. I don't know how you pronounce it. So we have to pick four characters to go. Now, this guy uh, is missing, so we can't use him. And she's at the tavern. She basically skips a turn at the tavern to kind of de-stress. And so the rest of our guys, we have to choose from them. We want to get, you know, as well-rounded of a party as we can get. So this guy is kind of our rogue. Uh, if we right-click on him, we can kind of, you know, see some different information about him. So he's a, a level one. Here's the quirks that we've unlocked about him so far. He's got a hard noggin, so he's got stun resistance. He's a night owl. You know, the light level drops you know, his speed goes up. And then he's also a known cheat. So we've got all these different ways to de-stress him, but he can't gamble in town. He's been banned from the gambling establishment. So that's one less opportunity we have to de-stress this guy. And then off guard, you know, on the first round, he loses four speed and five dodge. It makes him, you know, more likely to get injured in the first round. So here's his stats, here's his equipment, all these different things. Um, so this guy's a highwayman, a rogue. So these guys are pretty handy, so we're going to pop him in. Um, we're going to want a healer, so we're going to grab this lady since the other one is busy. Uh, we're going to want a fighter. Uh, this lady is a hellion, so she's, she's a tough one. We're going to grab her, pop her up front. And let's see who else we got here. That's about it. Uh, so let's grab this bounty hunter. And then we provision. So this is where we buy stuff before. Um, now, generally speaking, you want to buy, you know, enough food. You get random food checks and you have to feed your party. If you don't have food, uh, they don't heal. And then their stress level also shoots up. So you want to have some food available. I usually grab a shovel or sometimes two. Uh, occasionally when you're going through the ruins, you'll, you'll encounter, you know, a blockage. And if you try to clear it by hand, you end up getting hurt. I grab a few bandages if people get hot or cut and they have uh if they're bleeding they'll slowly lose health if you don't have a bandage and then we have things like medicinal herbs so if they have diseases uh skeleton keys so you can unlock certain areas uh holy water to purge evil and torches now the torch mechanic is interesting so basically when you're in the dungeon the light gets darker and darker and darker and the darker it is the more stress your characters are under and so you want to have torches there and it also affects you know the different you know bonuses and things that different people have in combat uh when it is dark you do have a, a more likely chance to have a critical hit but there's so many negatives there it kind of outweighs that so i usually grab some torches so this is going to be what we're going to go into the dungeon with uh and then we're going to embark and we'll check out the second half of the gameplay and we'll play this for a few minutes and uh, while we're doing this i'll kind of give my thought on the game um, corruption has soaked the soil, sapping all good life from these groves. So here we see right evil. off the bat, you got all these people. Dungeon's too difficult for me. So these people, if we click through them, we'll see their stress levels. She's at 50%, he's at 77%, 100%, 100%. These people are going to have a hell of a time. We're probably going to lose our whole party if we play through this the whole way. Um, but that's okay. So I just want to kind of give you a sense of what this looks like to play. So we can move around, select where we want to go, and we move. Basically, the map is divided into rooms and hallways. So we were just in a room. Now we're going down the hallway toward the next room. So every piece of the hallway, you see there's four segments here, a different event can happen. So you can trigger a trap, you can come across enemies, you can find treasure, or it could just be nothing. Uh, so we'll go down this hallway and we'll kind of see what's going on. You just saw her resolve was tested. So she got stressed out, she failed the check, 
And now this guy followed suit. He's fearful. And you'll notice these little black things pop up above their heads. This is every time they start getting more stress. So you see this lady's already at 91%. So we're, we're not doing terribly well here. And here's our first random thing here. This is this tree stump. Um, oh, another test, another failure. She's irrational. Even the aged oak will fall to the tempest. So if we click this, this is an old tree. There's a hole in the trunk. So if we can reach inside, we might find treasure or a trap. So it's covered in poisonous sap. Luckily, my guy resisted. Um, that won't always happen. But his resolve just got tested. Comes out that he's abusive. So I went into this dungeon with very, very stressed out characters. So the resolve was tested almost immediately. This is not going well. And now we get a chance to see the combat mechanic. Now, luckily, we surprised both of these guys. So we got a bit of a bonus here. So we're able to attack them first. Now the attack or the combat is all turn-based. Uh, usually not something I really dig, but I think it works well in this game. So our first character to go is Chaney, who's our bounty hunter. And you can see these are the different skills that he can use. He can collect bounty, which is an attack. He can mark, which is uh, a basic attack, and then it, it makes the character or the enemy easier to hit. We have this come hither, which is a light attack, but then it rearranges the, the line that they're in. Uh, so basically, depending on what position people are in the group, they have different abilities that are unlocked. So if you have somebody in the rear that you know, keeps hitting you with projectiles, you might use this to drag them up front, and it'll give you, you know, it'll make the fight that much easier. And then we have finish him, which is a strong attack, and then we can rearrange them in the group. So occasionally your guys will get arranged, rearranged in the group, especially if they're fearful and they run to the back, or if the enemy has an attack like this, come hither, and they can rearrange your party. Uh, and you'll have to waste a whole turn just rearranging people, which is a real track. Uh, but we're going to use our basic attack. So we click this. Strong attack. We got two different people that we can go after. This insatiable ghoul, he's got 74 hit points, or the cultist witch has 23 hit points. Now we can put a probably a pretty good dent in the insatiable ghoul, but we might be able to take out the cultist witch immediately. So you get a kind of a you know a big bump if you can take one of the bad guys out of the fight. So we're gonna attack this guy first. And he dodged, so totally missed it. So next up we have our healer. Now she's in the way back, so she can't do these two things that she, these two skills. So she can do judgment, and she can do divine comfort. Divine comfort's healing. All our guys are in good shape, so we'll just do judgment. And we'll attack the same guy, who also dodged. So things aren't going terribly well for us here. Uh... This character, so she can do Wicked Hack, she can do Breakthrough, Adrenaline Rush. If we do Breakthrough, it'll hit both of these characters, I believe, and they both dodge. So I think we're in a, a dungeon that's more advanced than what our characters can really handle, but that's all right. And we'll do an attack on this guy. I actually hit him. So now the other guys can attack us. So this Howl is going to hit all of us. It did light damage, but it's probably going to stress everybody out. And you'll notice the first character in the group has this double down arrow. So they got debuffed, basically. And you see this guy rearranged our party, so now they're not laid out the way we want them to. So the, the combat mechanic is actually pretty dense. There's, there's a lot to it. And, you know, I've been playing this game quite a bit. I'm still figuring out a good deal of this. Um, but that's kind of the basic mechanics of this. We're going to... I'm going to try to take these guys out, see what we do. Um, and I just want to talk about kind of the things about this game that I like, the things that I don't like. Um, on the don't like side, we'll do that first because there's, there's not much. I think this game is incredible. Um, there's not a lot I don't like. Um, the learning curve is pretty steep. I kind of wish there was more to showing you how to play the game in the beginning part. Uh, you start off with sort of a tutorial quest before you get into town, and it just kind of shows you how hard this game is going to be. Um, you start with two characters, and you're going to be lucky to finish with either of them. Um, this guy is actually from, from that. Um, my other guy died about halfway through. But it doesn't really hold your hand a whole lot. And there's good and there's bad in that. I mean, it can be frustrating. You might want to give up. But at the same time, when you do kind of figure things out, it's pretty cool. Like, you, you things start clicking and the game just becomes more fun. But it just it takes a while to get to that. And 
I mean, to be honest, that's my my one complaint about the game. I, other than that, this game is phenomenal. Um, the the big thing that I love is the art style. This game is gorgeous. I, I love the, you know, the the comic book look of all the characters. You know, they, they don't move around a whole lot, but there's just enough motion, you know, to kind of give the game a lot of life. And if you look into the background, I mean, look how how dense and well realized this little world is. You don't see a whole lot of what's going on here. Um, but what you do see is it's just beautiful and it just hints at this, this larger world that exists out here and I, I think that's really well done. Um, I really really enjoy the mechanic of you know having to, to cope with people's stress and things like that. Um, I think it's interesting you know you've got all these adventurers and they're going off and you know there's only so much stuff that, that people can take before it starts wearing them down psychologically and you start you know attacking these these walking ghouls and these horrifying looking monsters it's going to have a, a profound effect on their lives and it's it's really interesting to see how this game uses that as a gaming mechanic and really makes it challenging I mean, it adds this whole huge bit of challenge to the game, and I think it's just incredibly interesting. Um, I, I can't make it very far into the game. I'm, I'm kind of terrible at it, um, so I don't really know how it goes as far as RPG story. Like, I don't know if a lot develops out of here or if this is more just a you know, a roguelike thing where you kind of see how far you can go. And, you know, either way, I don't think there's a problem with it. Um, I think it would be cool if there was there was a developing story, but I, I honestly I can't get that far into the game without losing my whole party. Um, so I don't know if that's the case or not. Uh, the setting is incredible. The art style is incredible. Um, the the combat not really my cup of tea normally, but I think it functions really well here. You know, it's slow, it's methodical, but you really need that because it's difficult. And if it was real time. You wouldn't last through the first dungeon. There's just no way. Um, so it works really well given the rest of the, the, the game. Um, you just saw our character sulk to the back because she's afraid. Um, you also, if you were paying attention earlier, you saw one character just pass on their turn. Um, so the, the stress elements really can cripple you. Um, so yeah, that's, that's Darkest Dungeon. Uh, I think this game is absolutely incredible. Like I said, it's still in kind of the pre-release, um, so they're adding stuff to it. It seems like my game is constantly updating in Steam. Uh, they're doing bug fixes, they're adding new features and things like that. So I'm really excited to see where this game goes. A lot of these games that I review, I'll play during my review and I might pick up once or twice again, but I think this is one that I'm, I'm going to continue to come back to. Uh, so if you like role-playing games if you like kind of horror dark fantasy darkest dungeon check it out it's awesome the guys that developed this they deserve you know, some of your hard-earned money because i want to see more stuff like this that's got you know just something that makes it unique and interesting and you're just outside of the norm and it just functions so well in that respect so check it out if you think it looks cool buy it i think you'll be really happy with it darkest dungeon I liked it. Dave from Bricks of the Dead, thank you guys so much for watching.